Uh, welcome again to the Bexis YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for joining us. And uh, I'm joined today uh, by um, I nearly said Matchbox Royalty, but I don't want to embarrass uh, Graham Hamilton too much at all. Uh, but Graham is one of the big, iconic, I would say, uh, people within the Matchbox world. But I'm going to just ask Graham for a little bit of background so that you get to know him as well if you don't know him already. Hello, I'm Graham Hamilton. Uh, welcome to the preview of, of my picture box toy collection. Um, I was born in 67, um, Aldershot, Hampshire. Stayed in the whole area, so now, now, now live in Farnborough. Um, worked all my life, but the last sort of, 20 years I've been selling toys as a living, but this, as I said, is my own personal collection. And um, yeah, it's, uh, we've decided to sell, and it's going through Julian and Vectis, and that's why we're here today. Well, I thought it would be a little bit of fun, Graham, just for us to have a bit of a question and answer uh, yep. session to start mm -hmm. with. Um, just to get a bit of background on the connect on the collection, yep. uh, your philosophy behind it, because yep. um, I'm sure everybody would find that quite fascinating, because we don't really get the chance to speak to the, 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 the collector. Yeah, so, so, well, I was going to ask you, what actually got you started collecting? It, it, Julian, it's, it starts from the childhood. You ask any collector that. It, it's having those toys as a child, playing with them, enjoying them, mm. okay? Um, as a child, I, w I wasn't spoil spoiled. You know, Christmas and birthdays, you know, I'd have a dinky toy or a couple of matchbox toys, whatever. But I, I cherish my toys, you know, mm. I played with them. They went back in the boxes. They went on my shelf in my bedroom with my brothers, okay? I displayed my models even back then. Yeah. And I'm talking about the early 70s. I didn't get the kids, and I'm not knocking it, I didn't. I just didn't get the kids that smashed their toys up. You might have been one of those, I, I, I don't know. I, I was, unfortunately. Oh, were you? Yeah. Oh, shame yeah. on you, mate. I know. I know, but that, that's, that, you know, that- I, I don't do it anymore. No, I should hope not, no. Um, but yeah, I used to go to the school playground and you know, these kids will be like, you know, literally smashing their car. I think, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I mean, I didn't have a lot of toys. You know, as I say, you know, it would be a dinky toy for Christmas and maybe a couple of matchbox toys and whatever, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So yes, I played with my toys. Yes, they would have picked up a little bit of damage and certainly the boxes get warm where you're opening and closing them all the time. Okay, but I really, really cherish them. And, and that has just stayed with me. Um, of course. So, so they were the seeds of the collection. Oh, definitely. Oh, very, yeah. Very, very early. Oh, very, very early. Uh, because I, I never gave my toys away. I always kept them. Uh, they ended up in obviously my parents' loft. And what really started me as a collector, but sort of in the late eighties, um, you know, obviously I'd left home, and my dad rang me up one day, cleared the loft out, and said we found your old box of toys. So I went round there, and wow, fantastic. I hadn't seen these toys for, for, for 10 years because, as you know, when you're a child, you, you have several years of playing with toy cars. Yeah. That stops around the yeah. time, you know, senior school. Mm -hmm. So you're 10, 11, 12, something, something like that. You move on to other things, mm -hmm. okay? Whether that, whether that, well, for, for me, it's probably music and other things. And, you know, the, the toys, that they, they, again, they, they get put away in a box and forgotten totally. about. Then your shelves get taken over by records. Yeah. And that's what happens, okay? So that's it. And then when, sort of um, late teens, early 20s, I saw them again, it just came flooding back. Around that time, so you're talking probably 1990, something like that, 91 maybe, um, I got my toys back and really loved going through them again, yeah? Uh, there was a toy show advertising Guildford, which is near where I live in, in Farnborough. Yeah. yeah, Guildford in Surrey. Um, so I popped over there one evening, it's a toy show, toy show, what's, what's all that about? Went over there, walked in, bang, wow. It's a bit like when I walked in here for the first time, seeing this laid out, it was yeah. like fantastic. Back then, you know, there was 50 dealers in there, you know, 60s, 70s, dinkies, corgis, matchbox, corgi juniors, Britain's models. Balls with the deers, great. Yeah, all those, yeah. Uh, buckaroo, all, yeah. all that, and that's all like reissued now, but. Yeah. All that sort of evil can evil, uh, you name it. It was just all those toys I had as a kid, and I walked in and it was like, wow, I've, I've got to, I've got to buy these. Um, and I still remember the first toy, but it wasn't a matchbox toy. It was actually a dinky toy. 
it was a military set that I had with, with, when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I saw that, and the reason I went for that is because I took my dinky toy to school. So you're talking 73, 74. Mm -hmm. And I stupidly let my mate borrow it for the night. Okay, Oof. never got it back. Yeah. Never got it back. And that was on my birthday. <laughs> that was actually on my birthday. Ian Brooks, if you're watching, you, you, yeah, you don't, you don't forget it. You Ian, just, you've scarred Graham you, for life. You scarred me because basically you stole my dinky toy that I had for my birthday. So when I saw that dinky toy, you know, 20, 30 years later, okay, at that toy fair, mm. wow. Still remember, 30 quid, okay? Went down the cash point, there you go, thank you very much. That started me off. Then it was a case of going around shows, it was essentially Kempton Park, uh, Farnham Maltings, mm -hmm. uh, Hartley, Hartley Whitney, Guildford, yeah. uh, Reading, yeah. uh, th those sort of, th those fairs, you know, in and around where I lived. Um, and, and it just grew from there, just grew from there. All the toys I had as a child, the dinkies, the corgis, the matchbox. So the catalyst was not only rediscovering your old toys, but that nostalgia from you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But what actually got you so hooked on matchbox toys? You've just mentioned your first toy was a dinky. That's right. But obviously these five benches that we have here, five yeah. benches in our catalogue and warehouse, is full of your collection and it's, it's matchbox. That yeah, I know. I know, no, the dinkies are still at home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting them. Okay, well that's yeah. disappointing. Isn't it? <laughs> You're not getting them yet. The matchbox, again, it started from the childhood you know, one or two things like this. This is a typical model I had when I was a child. Mod rod. The mod rod with the, with the red wheels. Yep. Okay, I had it as a child. You know, great little model. Some people look at that and think, oh, that's, that's nothing. But to me, it, it just means something. So I started collecting the sort of early 70s uh, super fast models. Uh, that's another typical one. Okay, yeah. that little custom Jeep with the, with the engine stuck out of it. Uh, you know, and the list is endless. So I started putting those together. And then I was at the final, I still remember it, final Mortons toy show, again, early, early 90s, and I saw on this dealer's table a pocket catalogue. Oh yes, Matchbox one. Yeah, pocket catalogue, 50p, whatever, whatever it was, 5p in the day. Uh, and I just sort of flipped and I went, oh wow, 1 to 75. I don't actually recall that as a child so much. Yeah. The 1 to 75 thing. Yeah, they were just kind of there, weren't they? They were news there. agents or yeah. whatever yeah. the toy shop yeah. was. I, I, you know, you made no reference to the number. No. Even though things like this, if you turn if you turn the model, it does say number one mm -hmm. mod rod. There, there's the box that says number one mod rod. Um, you know, it, you, you made no connection with the number. You just enjoyed the model. So when I saw this, okay, I didn't have any collector's catalogs as a child. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they existed. No, neither did I no. actually. No. I'll be honest with you. No. So I had the tea cards, yeah. You know, the, you know did the yeah. tea card yeah. thing, uh, but I didn't know about the catalogue. So when I saw this one at the toy show, when I flicked through it, wow! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! So when well, I was buying toys, I remembered as a child. There's also ones that you remember as a child, that either your friends had, that you saw in the toy shops, yeah, these or, revolving yeah the revolving displays, displays all that sort of stuff. And then ah, so it doesn't just stop there. So, bought the catalogue, and then you start ticking them off because cleverly, mod rod, good mark, yeah, tick. good, yeah, cheap hot rod, tick, tick, yeah, exactly, and it and it goes on, mm. tick, tick, tick. Yeah, you filled a few catalogues here, mate. I have. So it was that. So you filled a catalogue, mm -hmm. but then as you get more and more into it, you think, let's move on to the next year. Mm -hmm. So then you move to seventy two. Mm. Because every year, as you know, they did a catalogue. Mm -hmm. Going back to the early days, yeah, even back to the 50s, yeah. they did a pocket collector's catalogue. So I got the bug really by that first collector's catalogue and then wanting to fill or tick off mm -hmm. every model. And over the years, essentially, I've done that. Yeah. But what I did is that I moved forward in time. So I started with, the, I think, like the 72 catalogue. Mm -hmm. Went to 73, 74, moved on, got to 82, mm -hmm. everything. And you think, right, I'm done. But I can't stop collecting matchbox toys because it's that bug and disease, isn't it? But in the words of Cher Graham, we can always turn back time. We're going to burst into song. Well, could we? 
Can we do that? You don't want all the ladies and gentlemen to switch off, do you? All right, okay. okay. Maybe at the end. Indeed. Maybe at the end of the video. Indeed. If they're lucky. So then, right, um, I can't just stop this thing. So what do you then do? So I started then going back in time. Okay. And interestingly, what the, what the viewers might not know is, is that in the early days, as we both know, um, when they had a, the MoCo distribution, the MoCo constant, uh, the boxes were very plain. Yeah. So in the 50s, from 54 to 60, 61, they were just a very plain, yeah, well, with, with the great suspect, a boring box. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, they, they were using their USP, weren't they? Yeah. It's a matchbox toy. Yeah. And they used that um, Swiss, uh, not Swiss, uh, Norwegian. Nordic, Nordic, yeah, Nordic, 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 Nordic safety match. The Nordic safety match, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Um, so I, I was aware of those, but because I'm a 60s, 70s person, I don't know, it didn't do it for me. So I stopped at 61, which is the, yeah, the picture box era. These picture boxes. Exactly, yeah. and that is the first picture box type, yeah. the matchbox produced. Specifically produce. picked a D1 there. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. 1961. Mm -hmm. So my collection spans the entire picture box period from 61 to 1982, mm -hmm. with absolutely no admissions at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's taken me well over 30 years, 34 years, okay, to basically get every box design. Yeah. So your D boxes, the E's, the F's, all the way through to the, the last L, and even the, what I would call an M box, even this yeah, right fairly the, boring generic yeah. window box. That's right at the end, isn't it? It's right at the end. The Lesney factory. But there are models that appear in these boxes that you won't get in picture boxes. Yeah, and that's that's actually that's actually interesting. This is quite interesting what Graham's picked up on here. Actually, um, we find lots of those models, don't we, Graham? They've yeah. been taken out of those boxes. Mm -hmm. Those boxes have been discarded and thrown away. Mm -hmm. And that model will be put in a colour picture box because the majority of collectors prefer it in a colour picture box. Yeah, but that's actually wrong. Yeah, I mean we sell them here at Vectis auctions like that because predominantly <coughs> when these type of models come in. They are already been married up with a colour picture box. But if, if you're a matchbox purist, yep. Yep. that's the box it should be in. Yes. Sealed as well. Yes. Factory sealed. sealed. Yes. Never yes. been opened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing in my collection, let's say we, 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 we now know, we've tried to explain that it is the picture box period. Mm -hmm. So nothing pre 1961. Mm -hmm. Okay. All the way through to 82. Yeah. Okay. And not just with the small scale 175s, and if we're going to pan round later on, you'll see I've also done it with the king size, with the super the kings super and kings, yeah. you know the battle kings yeah. and the gift sets as well. Mm -hmm. So it's all all the way through, mm -hmm. not just the small scale models. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pull you back for a moment, yeah, just while I remember, because yeah. I think I think this is quite an interesting point. You've said it's been over 30 years collecting yeah. all these toys. Mm -hmm. You've already picked up on the mod rod because yep. you actually remembered that one from your childhood and that yep. one had red wheels. It did, yeah. Can you remember when you bought that one? I know that's a very big ask out of one we've got 1800 models or something like that. So so, so when I when I re re, yeah, re, re, re bought re, it. Yeah. 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 Again it would it would have it would have been very early nineties. Okay. okay. Now the weird thing was, okay, is that I know I had it with red wheels. Yeah. And basically um, as far as I know, it's the only model in the range with red wheels. Yeah. Okay. It's normally it would be like this. Normally has black, black wheels. wheels. So I'm not saying that's a particularly rare model. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's how I remember it. Yep. And I do have one of those memories. I'm pretty good. Yeah. I'm getting on a bit. Yeah. But I'm. I'm I am. I am. We all are. Yeah. Um, but I do remember it. And when I first started going around toy shows looking for the mod rod, because that was on my radar at the time, mm. I can't tell you what was the very first Matchbox tie I bought, but it would have been of this period. Yeah. It would have been the early 70s custom car period. Okay. So, so can, can you remember, sorry to stop you then, this was what I was going to try and get across um, to, to our lovely audience. Can you remember what you paid for that? 50p a pound. A pound? Pound tops. How much would it have been when it was brand new? Back in seventy. In seventy one, it would have been on the cusp of twelve and a half p to fifteen p. So it had so already appreciated. Yeah, it, yeah, it did really. Yeah, yeah. it did. Not by yeah, not 
big shakes. 400%, something but, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What would you say that's worth today? I know I'm the guy who's supposed to be the internet to put it in the catalog, but... If, 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 you're going into, if you're going into auction, okay, mm -hmm. and somebody really wants that, quality makes a difference. One thing I didn't say yeah. is that the collection has quality edge to it. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's no tatty boxes. You know, I don't have chip models. The, the boxes are all nice and clean and fresh as they were made, mm. you know, 50, 50 years ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, on a bad day, you're probably looking at 30 quid. Mm -hmm. And on a very, very good day, maybe 50 quid. Yeah. yeah. So when you think back, that was 15 pence, Originally, in 1971, stroke 72, mm. you're now looking at you know 50 quid. Yeah, but you can see how on a good day over time that curve. If you oh like, yeah, it's gone curve. exponentially high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the thing is, you see, my collection wasn't about the buck. It was about my childhood. It was about mm -hmm. becoming a collector, getting the collector disease with with Matchbox. Mm -hmm. um, but as you've seen this curve rise. It's now appealed to the investor market. Absolutely. Because there's no money in the financial system. No. So investors, we're both passionate about toys. You're a collector as well. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, this guy's not just Mr. Vectis, he he's a collector as as, as I am. Mr. Okay. Vectis. We we collect toys. Yeah. Okay, but there are people that buy toys to invest in it. Yes. Okay. And you can see that is a very good example. But that is not just that individual model. We can say the same for every single oh, piece. Everything on this every thing all the way down. You could, you, yeah. could, you could go back to a very, very, uh, you know, th this one we looked at earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, that was one and nine. That's old money, folks. You know, that's one shilling and old nine pence. That's under 10 pence in today's eight, eight and a half pence. Eight yeah. and a half pence. Yeah, exactly. So, one and nine. What's that one worth, Greg? Well, that one is, let's say, it's, 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 a, it's a rare variation because it's got the grey wheels. And if Ooh. you look here, there's a, there's a black wheel version there, okay? And that's a 30 or 40 quid. A grey wheel one is 200 pound plus. Easily. Easily. Yeah. Could be three. You know, three Vectis that will be two and a half thousand. We always um, have good days at Vectis, by the way. Never a bad day. Yeah, but it's it's at least two, three hundred because of that variation. So there you go. One shilling and nine old pence to 300 pounds. Okay, I'll ask you another question now. Yeah. We've just touched a little bit on value. Mm. What was your best buy? Oh. Well, I hope he's not watching. <laughs> um, yes, I'm a, one thing I didn't say, or I don't think I said, but you know, um, I am a professional dealer as well. So I've had a, my own toy company for nearly 20 still years. Do. I still do. Yeah, I, just, I still do. Okay. Uh, so that, that doesn't change. All, all you folks that think I'm retiring, I carry on. And that's Rocketron Toys, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he's got it in. Rocketron Toys. He's got it in. He's got it in. I couldn't leave you. I couldn't leave you hanging there. All oh, right. Me. Okay. Okay. We're, but yeah, we're so, not so, quite as PC as the BBC. No. No. So that that that, that carries on. Okay. But the, we're focusing on my collection. Mm -hmm. For best for best buy. Okay. Uh, we would have to. I'll go and get it for you. All right. We would have to go over there to the forty four refrigerator. The pre production. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Okay, folks. I'll get the other one as well. So that... Yeah, prepare to be amazed. Um, okay. As the collecting progressed, um, it started going from known standard model variations to the more rare variation, and in more recent years, pre-production models and colour trials, which is a whole different talking point again. Oh, and if Graham, we could have an hour-long yeah, video Yeah, exactly. And if there was another thing about that that sometime you wanted to do, very happy to do it. Put um, that in the comments pages, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see that. Yeah, so if you want any information on pre-production models and the story behind that mm. and, you know, the, the, the designer guys that, that I've been lucky to meet yep. and, over the years, then fine. But what it basically was is that you'll, you'll see here um, that these two refrigerator trucks, um, completely different colours, okay? This is the Commonal Garden Matchbox model. It's also in a Commonal Garden box, okay? And even today, if you're lucky, you can pick that up for 15 quid. Yeah. 
yeah, 20 quid. They're available at that kind of money. At worst, 30 quid. If you wanted it in that condition, 30 pounds. Yes. Because that's a very crisp Yeah, because it's, it's a clean, fresh yeah. box and it's a, yeah. it's a nice but clean But if you're not quite model. as particular, yeah. 15 pounds. Now, what I wasn't aware of, and what a lot of collectors weren't aware of, okay, was the, the box artwork here. Mm -hmm. And as you can see with this, it's a completely different colour to the model produced. Yeah. Okay. And you'll see with this one, it's exactly the same box design, but you'll see the model matches the box art. Okay. So that's the pre-production. This is a pre-production model. I found this at a toy show. I was just going to say, I'm expecting Graham now to tell us that his best buy was not this one. No. But this one. No. No. I would have paid more for that one than that one. Go on then. So that, that would have probably cost me, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds okay. 10 years ago. Back in the day. Yeah. Right. This one here, when I saw this, I presumed it was a repainted model. Um, the guy that was selling it also said it was a repainted model. And one thing I don't do, which again, this could be another YouTube channel thing, uh, is about um, people that repaint models to fake deliberately. them deliberately to deceive them. Okay. I do not have a single wrong model in my collection. Mm -hmm. Repainted or a fraudulent piece, mm -hmm. okay, which is unfortunately a problem in the market at the moment. Oh, it's a problem we face all the time. Yes, exactly. All the time. Exactly. Obviously, uh, fact, it's obviously authenticates all the models as being completely genuine yeah. when they were as, as, as I do as a as a as, as, as a, a professional dealer. Yeah, as a yeah. professional dealer, again, you have my stamp of approval. Yeah, and I think that's one of the key things to remember at all. Although we're not going to really go into all the fakes, but. It, you must make sure that you're buying from a reputable source, whether that's a reputable auction house or a reputable dealer. Absolutely, absolutely. So at the time, um, I just thought it was a repaint, but I thought that's that's quite a jolly little thing. Yeah. And I, I, I put it back down again, you know, and walked away. When I went back to, because I was actually a stall holder at the time, and when I went back to my stall with, with, my, with my stock, and I had one of these as part of my stock, and I suddenly thought, oh, hello. <laughs> Light bulb moment. Bing! Yep. So I went back to that stall and. You I had said, another look? I had another look, but again, I still thought it was a repaint. I thought somebody's done it to, to replicate the box, just for a bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. I, get, I get that completely. Okay. So, and we had a bit of a discussion about it. Mm. Okay, and he sort of said, same, same as me, I said, I'm going to buy that. And he went, no, you're not, are you? I said, yeah, because it's a bit of fun. Yeah, but and collecting should be fun. Yeah, it should be. And again, you know, I don't have repaints or anything like that in the collection. This is early doors and I thought it was three quid. Okay, it was three quid. Yeah. Now, today you could put three noughts on that. Yeah, I would, I would say you're not far off the mark there, Graham. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that a very, would, a very desirable piece. Yeah. That. Um, what a story. That's my best, financially, my best buy. But without realising. Without realising. Bought as a repaint. Bought as a repaint. But actually authentic. But authentic. Wow. Now, that model started me on the matching artwork to the box. Oh. It was that model. So that was the start of this entire. That, so if, if for if, the matching box artwork, mm -hmm. that model started it. Wow! Because then I realised if it's drawn, it exists. it exists. And I've been saying that for years. Yeah. If it's drawn, it exists. We've had that conversation many for times. For years, for years and yeah. years and years. Yeah. yeah. And again, I've been lucky enough to either meet people or go to sales mm -hmm. from the people that actually drew this artwork mm -hmm. in the 60s and the 70s. Mm -hmm. So we know they drew them from models they were given from the research and development. And you have department. some of those. Graham, Graham actually has some of these which have been signed by the artists. Yes. yes. Let me find, yeah, here we are. I've, just, I've turned around. This, it's such a prolific collection. We haven't stage managed this, by the way, but I've just no. turned around. We yeah. have one there. Yeah. And um, 
This, this, this signature here uh, is a chap called Ron Jobson, um, who great, I gratefully you know, signed these picture boxes, and I'm lucky to own three of these. Yeah. He only ever signed six, I believe. Yeah. Was it six? Six, Graham. And I have one of those. Six. You do. Yes, you do. Yeah. So between us, we've got four. Yeah. We've got the lion's share. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it just gives that sort of added. This is not a particularly rare model. Well, it's not a rare model. No. Okay. No. Okay. But it's, he, it's not a very rare box either. No. But no. As soon as you've got the signature yes. of the guy who did the box artwork, yes, then it's unique. Yes. That is one of one. And there's one. One of one. There's one particular special model, which is the. Blue MG. Oh, nearly forgot about that. Yeah. I'll be back in a moment. Yes, ladies and gentlemen.